Hiya, Merry Christmas, welcome to the Christmas Armistice and we're already four hours into our special Spice Girls Amnesty. So that means if you've got any unwanted Spice Girl gifts, merchandise or a Spice Girl, bring them down to us and we'll burn them on this special big Spice Fire. That's right, I've got Leah here. What are you going to throw to the flames? I'm going to throw these Chris, mm -hmm. the CD and um, the style. Brilliant, OK. Now, why have you gone off the Spice Girls? They've really misjudged their marketing strategies. <laughs> They've um, exposed their self with their sponsorship deals, mm -hmm. and they should have um, held back on some of the promotional stuff until next year. Yeah, I think that's a very good assessment. And who do you like now? Courtney Pine. <laughs> Courtney Pine. Well, a fickle lot, aren't they? OK, let's have a look at some things on the bonfire. We've had all sorts of things handed in. Key rings, CDs, obviously thousands of packets of crisps. We've had a whole load of pictures of the girls downloaded from the internet. Don't know what that's all about. Um, and, uh, oh, Ginger Spice has just been handed in. There she is, Jerry. <laughs> OK, so let's torch a whole lot of them. <laughs> Two, one, go! Welcome to the first of two Armistice specials this week, looking at the year just collapsed. The year in which 18 long years of blinkered government riding roughshod over democratic debate and peopled by law-breaking MPs finally started. The year, the year in which New Labour hit the ground running and John Denver hit the ground flying. The year in which Louise Woodward resolved never to buy a Tamagotchi cyber pet. And a desperate William Hague flew to Massachusetts and got Judge Hiller Zobel to reduce Labour's majority to 42. <laughs> that was the year in which the whole world was moved by the sight of a simple carriage making its slow procession in sombre silence as the Mars Pathfinder mission crawled <laughs> over the planet. And there were exciting signs that life could have existed on Mars millions of years ago. As you can see, there's a heavily ionised carbon compound deposit crystallised uh, just there on the McDonald's carton at the bottom of the picture. And talking of stuff being blasted off the surface of the Earth, the IRA called another permanent ceasefire, applying the new metric definition of permanent, meaning eight months. <laughs> Sinn Féin were welcomed into the peace talks and turned up all over the telly, including on an edition of Kids' programme, Live and Kicking. Welcome to the hot seats today. Let's go to the phones. We'll take a very quick call from line four. Hello, line four. Good afternoon. Yeah, what's your question? Well, I have made my position and the position of Sinn Féin very clear. We have to allow for the fact that for the last 18 months, the initiative lay with the British government. Why didn't those negotiations happen in the last 18 months? That was a fantastically asked question. Thank you. <laughs> Brilliant. Yes, go ahead, guys. I think the best thing to do is maybe to get in touch with the... BAF, which is the British Athletics Federation. <laughs> Sounds like good advice to me, does it to you? Thank you. Yeah, you're going to take them up on it? Well, I think that the IRA is persuadable. Good, thank you very much for your call. Now, it was also the year in which Britain gave Hong Kong back to the Chinese, and the Chinese gave Chris Patton back to the Tories. <laughs> and in a moving ceremony, Patton was taken out of service, decommissioned, and turned into a floating museum. <laughs> The year ended with accusations that Tony Blair was all soundbite and no substance, citing as an example one 15-minute soundbite that didn't contain any verbs. Freedom, choice, opportunity, aspiration, ambition, stable economy, long-term investment, gas, electricity, telecommunications, public procurement, financial services, opportunity, responsibility, no 
Cash for questions. Colleges, <laughs> universities, libraries, violent crime, drug pushers, anti-social neighbours, hooligans, low-wage, low-skill, low-technology economy. Sleaze, cash for questions, lies, broken promises, bogus red tape, expensive bureaucracy. Education, education and education. Anyway, I picked up, um, just picked up something from that fire outside. Um, <laughs> yeah. oh, God, God, God. Have a bit of this. Oh, fruit coming off. Bit leathery, that. Mm. Actually, it's quite nice, actually. It? It's true, it does actually taste like pork. <laughs> <laughs> Should have seen it when we snapped a wishbone. Um, now, if you've uh, just tuned in, you're not watching Zombie Flesh Eaters. It's, uh, it's a review of the... It's a review of the year. <laughs> And we've just burned ginger spice on a fire. <laughs> anyway, anyway, enough of that, because uh, as of midnight tonight, it will, of course, be illegal to eat loudmouth on the bone. <laughs> um, OK. Uh, Peter, David, did you chew anyone under the mistletoe? No, the mistletoe. Oh, no, I'd rather not talk. It was <laughs> Granny's turn this year. I'd rather not talk about it. But, uh, but well, I have been doing a survey on what the most popular gifts for Christmas were. And believe it or not, one of the most popular has been this, which is perfume... For a man or for a woman. Ooh. For a man or for mm. a woman. Um, it's actually part of a range of products. You can get um, food for you or for your dog. <laughs> and there's this, which is cream for a rash or a scone. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, videos were very popular this year, uh, weren't they? You know, but it helps uh, with videos to sell them if they contain previously unseen footage. Uh, that's why this went to the top of the charts. It's the Full Monty You Can See Their Cox edition. <laughs> And of course, the big sellers this Christmas were the Tamagotchi Cyber Pets, uh, but there were some really strange stories about them. For example, that girl who was arrested in Bolton uh, when police raided her flat and found ten dead Tamagotchis buried oh. under a floorboard. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, those Tamagotchis are actually they're, they're old news now. In Japan, there's a new thing. All the kids are really into it. It's going to be massive over here. We've got a bit of sneak preview. Um, it's called A Baby on a Rope. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> How to lose an audience's sympathy easily. <laughs> That's my daughter. Uh, uh, does that make it better or worse? I don't know. <laughs> now, kids, remember, if you do want one, they take a lot of care and attention. You have to feed it, change it, then as it grows bigger, you can watch it treat your house like a hotel. <laughs> discipline them, David. Now, uh, back on to gift ideas, we've uh, discussed one video. The BBC brought out a video of its coverage of the general election, which was very popular. But I think the most popular gift version of the election uh, was this. This is uh, the Election 97, the Tory cut. <laughs> um, this puts their night in a good light, so it doesn't contain scenes previously shown on the night. Um, but it does contain that great bit we all remember when uh, Peter Lilly thanked the police. Do you oh, remember that? Was that? Absolutely <laughs> marvellous. Of course, we can't, we can't talk about the election without looking at the moment that, for many of us, uh, summed up that evening. Portillo, <laughs> 19,137. <laughs> Twig, Stephen, Labour Party. 20,500. I know we've got to be balanced in everything. Uh, so, on one hand, you know, that was the best thing I've ever, ever seen on television. Yes. yes. What's the other hand? Then? I've got to have a think about that. <laughs> no idea. On the other hand, he had very good posture. You know. Yeah. So. Well, I remember there was a lot of hope the next day because lots of people all over the country were saying, "At long last, we have a we have a government hmm. who will cut benefits for the disabled." <laughs> <laughs> uh, our memory of election night was, of course, of sitting in this very studio giving you the results uh, because we did a live election night armistice on May the first. And we started by looking at what was perhaps one of the dirtiest campaigns since Jonathan Aitken protested his innocence. And it started with the Tories releasing footage which they claimed proved Labour were intending to put up taxes. We do want to raise taxes. <laughs> then the Tories released this footage which they claimed showed John Prescott out one night clearly looking for whores. 
The frightened Labour hid John Prescott from the voters by sending him canvassing on the moon. So that was the campaign on screen. It got even messier in poster form. But of course, nowhere was the election fought more fiercely than on the billboards. And in the last couple of weeks, it got a bit personal as the Tories lashed out with Tony Blair too tiny to govern. <laughs> now, Labour kept their cool. They continued to play it safe while trying to put across a positive, clear message with this. We are the Labour. <laughs> So what the Tories did, they cleverly questioned Blair's fitness to govern with this. <laughs> now, Labour were clearly rattled and they slipped up with this, the first ever poster gaff. Look, we'll have to put up taxes. <laughs> this was replaced instantly with this. Look, kids <laughs> They thought they'd got away with it, but the Tories smelt blood and returned to the key theme of Europe with their most controversial effort to date. Tony Blair, he'll <laughs> nearly throw on the old helmet. Labour played ultra safe after that with this poster. <laughs> but the Tories weren't giving up a final salvo. They recalled their notorious demon eyes with this. <laughs> Better the devil you know. Tony Blair, he was so confident he was going to win all along. In fact, he was so cocky that the night before the election, he actually went out on a last night before being Prime Minister stag night. It's true, and we've actually, we sent someone out to get some pictures. We've got them here. There he is, there he is in the, in the pub with some friends of Peter Mandelson, <laughs> knocking back the hooch. And who's that? Looks like Betty Boothroyd. It's a Betty Boothroydogram. <laughs> there she is, swinging into action. Oh, oh, there. He loves it when she's hard on him. There she goes. Order, order, Betty, please. He loves it. Oh, dear. Things have got to be out of hand. He's thrown up the hooch in the back of a taxi now. From spin doctors, they've tied him to a lamppost there. Look, there he is. Just a rosette to protect his party allegiance. It's very hairy, isn't he? <laughs> Quite attractive. And uh, there he ends up in a police cell, yes. And uh, look, that's how confident he was. Number 10. <laughs> Of course, the most appalling thing about the whole election campaign is that the two party leaders didn't meet. The nearest they came to it was when we managed to get them together to take part in a staring contest in front of David Frost and a blinkometer. In the words of Michael Caine, where would you like to begin? <laughs> what is the basis of your denial of these terms? And is it true that this has been certified by the Moroccan government? <laughs> now, it's been a year of great change, of great emotion. A remarkable year, sometimes tragic, mm. sometimes exhilarating, but always very affecting. Mm. So we decided that the only way to do justice to this most incredible of years was to play Stars in Your Eyes of 97! Hey! 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 And, and here they are, ordinary people with extraordinary dreams. So let's meet them. And here's our very first member of the public. What's your name? Uh, my name's Kevin and I'm a plumber. Great. And who from 97 are you going to be today, Kevin? Well, David, tonight I'm going to be that bloke who was caught upside down in the hull of his boat for four days eating chocolate. Fantastic. OK, all the best. Off you go, Kevin. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome that bloke who was trucked upside down in the hull of his boat for four days eating chocolate! <laughs> Hey! He won the nation's heart by costing the one million pounds to rescue him. Next year, Tony's decided, thanks Tony, Tony's decided he's going to stay clear of boats. He plans to fly over the rim of Mount Vesuvius in a hang glider made out of ice. There he goes. That's a good idea, Tony. He got halfway through a chocolate finger before he realised it was one of his own. Okay, I'm with our next ordinary member of the public. What's your name? 
Hi, I'm Shelley Matthews and I'm a, a teacher. Okay, and who from 97 are you going to be for us tonight? Well, tonight, Armando, I'm going to be Anne Widdicombe. Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> okay, off you go and good luck. Right, put your hands together for Miss Anne Widdicombe. <laughs> There you are. <laughs> Anne Widdicombe there, the people's spinster, who seemed for a moment human by attacking Michael Howard, but is still the one who shackled pregnant prisoners by the ankles in a desperate attempt to stop them giving birth to persistent young offenders. <laughs> OK, what's your name? Lucy Simmons. Lucy Simmons. And who are you going to be tonight? Well, Peter, I'm going mm. to be the former Hong Kong governor, Chris Patton. Chris Patton. <laughs> Lucy, off you go. OK, please welcome former Governor of Hong Kong, the next leader of the Conservative Party or Mayor of London. Either way, his talents cannot be wasted. Chris Patton! He did actually not want to give Hong Kong back to the Chinese, but then he got a final demand, one of those red things, and he thought, well, I better give it back. A little, little thing at the bottom saying, if you've already handed back a colony in the last seven days, please ignore this demand. <laughs> Fantastic. OK, I'm with these three. Who are you going to be? We're the staff of the H&I Tour Company in Sutton, and we're going to be the Louise Woodward trial. <laughs> Every step of the way, off you go. Good luck. Please welcome them. Yay! Yeah, you should be over there misadvising her. Doesn't look like that. That's it, that's what we remember. There we go. There she is, uh, Louise Woodward. She just wanted to be the old pair of people's hearts. Oh, look at her. She's innocent, you can tell from the side of her face. Look at her. Oh. And from her passport. <laughs> and in fact, Judge Hiller Zobel, he's going to be opening up the January sales here where everything is going to be reduced to manslaughter. <laughs> okay. And if her appeal uh, succeeds in March, she's going to take on Prince Nassim Hamid. <laughs> Which is great because he could do the kicking. Off you go! Hey. Bye! All right. And uh, who are you? I'm Graham Boyd and I work for the Forestry Commission. All right. Nice job. Good. Well done. And who from 97 are you going to be tonight? Tonight I'm going to be Neil in Christine Hamilton. Oh, well <laughs> okay, off you go. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back the Hamilton. Yay. Christine Hamilton, but they refused to be severed down the middle and stitched together, which is the only reason we wanted them. So <laughs> there you go. There is something the Hamiltons won't do on telly. <laughs> so there they go, the corrupt, money-grabbing mercenaries of people's hearts. <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, finally, now, who are you, and who are you going to be? I'm Sue Dickinson. Yeah. And tonight, I'm going to be Mohammed Al Fayyad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I can't see it myself, but to prove us wrong, off you go! <laughs> OK, please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Mohammed al Fayed! <laughs> Amazing! There he is! There he is! You have such an aura. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's hear it, man. Thank you. OK. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's all up to you tonight. You get the chance to choose your winner. The winner sings their songs live, so please use the voting apparatus attached to the end of your shoulder to register your vote for the Armistice Look A Bit Alike personality of 1997. And if you want to take part at home, I'm afraid you can't. OK, so vote now, please. And the winner is the only one who can sing, Anne Widdicombe. Where is she? There she is. Yay! I'd say this, but take it away and look at him. Stupid girl. <laughs>
can't believe you faked it Can't believe you faked it Okay, thanks, Sam. Thanks, Sam. Thanks. Thanks, Anne. Uh, don't give up on the something of the day job. Um, now, of course, it's been a year of big news stories, what with Labour's win and the tragic success of the Teletubbies. And the BBC responded by launching its 24-hour news channel, so that at any time of the day or night, you can see a long report you saw before in an earlier part of the day or night. And when the channel started, it was clear the same amount of effort went into broadcasting news at three o'clock in the morning, as at peak viewing time. Good morning, it's just coming up to quarter past one, the headlines this morning. Tokyo's stock market has already fallen by more than 500 points, opening for the first time since the Yamaichi collapse. I'm, I'm sorry, but I, the BBC, I don't mean to bite the hand that feeds me, but the BBC have lost it a bit at the moment. <laughs> like, like, um, OK, perfect day, yes, that was a great success, but... Three times they, sh they showed it on Christmas oh, Day. Yeah. And I was just in the dressing room and I was just flicking through the channels. They, believe it or not, they have a 24-hour perfect day channel. <laughs> the whole time. Now, you can imagine what barrels are being scraped there. <laughs> yes, there we are. It's nice. Uh, that... They stopped Arthur from EastEnders there. No. Oh, yes, it is. Just a perfect day. How can they sing so low? <laughs> <laughs> there he is, see, after from his name. They just, they just thrust the camera in their face. When it gets dark, They've run out of singers, you can tell. And to death, I mean, they can't get any musical people. That, that's uh, Kirsty Wood. I mean, this is, this is what I'm talking about. You made me forget myself. And that's someone from Blue Peter. 24 hours of this. That's uh, Tony Arthur from, from Playaway. <laughs> Too shocking, they've attacked her with a camera. Oh, please. Oh, the man's gone away. I'm glad I spent it with you. <laughs> well, there we are, 24 hours, perfect day. Actually, it's, a, it's a multimedia effort. If you turn now, and this really is true, I'm, I'm not saying that isn't, but this really is true, turn now to CFAX, <laughs> page 619, and you'll see perfect day, rolling perfect day. I promise you that. Sue me. <laughs> right, don't do it now. Yeah, I mean, there were lots of channels were born uh, this mm. year. I mean, I suppose the biggest one was uh, Grenada Men and Motors. Mm. That is, uh, <laughs> that was on. The Carlton Select Food Channel. Mm. Uh, oh, and uh, Channel 5. Mm. <laughs> People talk about the, the bad reception, it's generally good, but um, I can't get a lot of the jokes on the comedy programmes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dangerous stuff. <laughs> Channel 5 is a sort of mood channel, isn't mm. it? Because people sort of put it on but don't actually watch it. It's very much sort of in the background. I mean, mm. people have it on in the background when they're doing other things, mm. like reading the paper or... Yeah. Mm. I mean, I have it on when I'm watching ITV. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you something, actually, this is, this is absolutely true. Uh, yeah. And you might have noticed this if you are 34 and as sad as me. <laughs> is that if you... Um, there aren't many in that category. Yeah, right, that, that's basically me and uh, you. But, um, if you put Channel 5 on about 1 in the morning on a Thursday, I think it is, yeah. and then put ITV on, you can watch different episodes of Prisoner Cell Blockade <laughs> at the same time. Which, the brilliant thing about this is, you can flip between the two and make your own new episodes. Prisoner Cell Blockade. I got vinegar tits to have an argument with herself the other day. <laughs> I, I you, I've watched so much Prisoner Cell Block H, I'm now up to sit Prisoner Cell Block I. <laughs> Is that the next level? Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about that 24-hour uh, news channel because I've often thought the most boring job in the world must be the continuity announcer mm -hmm. on that channel because all they have to do all day is go, and now the news. <laughs> <laughs> and of course with the uh, multi-channel explosion uh, came programmes for minority viewing interests including the BBC's specially released Gay Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> One day out of struggle, it will not do. My feelings will not be repressed. You must allow me to tell you how ardently I admire and love you. <laughs> I am myself absolutely aware that I will be going expressly against the wishes of my family, my friends, and I hardly need add my own better judgment. <laughs> the relative situation of our families is such that any alliance between us must be regarded as a highly reprehensible connection. <laughs> Indeed, as a rational man, I cannot regard it as such myself, but it cannot be helped. Almost from the earliest moments of my acquaintance, I have come to feel for you a passionate admiration and regard, which despite all my struggles, <laughs> I have 
have an objection, and I beg you most fervently to relieve my suffering and consent to be my wife. <laughs> Come here, my child. Oh, there you go. Now, on Thursday, Britain takes over the European presidency and Labour will be marking it with the launch of their new single, European Finance Ministers Are Coming Home. <laughs> so how are we going to prepare for these rabid European animals, hell-bent and destroying our way of life and introducing tougher anti-pollution measures? <laughs> well, we're ready. Under Whitehall, 40 feet below the ground, and notice I said feet, not grams, is a Euro bunker dedicated to preserving the British way of life. We showed everyone around it. Now, at the moment of the Great Invasion, the Great British Banger here will be taken from its normal home, the crypt of Westminster Abbey, and then placed under 24-hour armed guard so no one can get at the crowned sausage. <laughs> Meanwhile, a single portion of fish and chips wrapped in newspaper the way it should be will be cryogenically preserved in liquid nitrogen and batter. <laughs> A few cells from a bowler hat will be placed on a Petri dish so that uh, scientists in the future can clone from it. And this is what one of them will look like after just two weeks. <laughs> and uh, they'll also be incubating scout's eggs. Over here, they've stocked up on tinned pounds. And if you're getting worried, don't. They may never get here. Britain's shores will be defended by a huge wall made out of illegal immigrants and asylum seekers. <laughs> but, but, in a nightmare scenario, if the Europeans manage to get down here, the government has piled up massive reserves of guts, upper lips, backbones and spunk. <laughs> of course, we have got the ultimate British weapon here, which is being clumsy with a long plank. <laughs> For everyone down here, the rest of us will have to cope above ground with Europe's cleaner air and rivers where kingfishers don't make nests out of chemical foam. <laughs> we'll be forced to kiss, have good sex, dress well and work reasonable hours. <laughs> now, the British people can get round this by following very careful drills. At the first sign of the Euro police, hide your cow in the attic. <laughs> then, make like a European. So, here we have a typical jolly British pub. Now, as you can see, this sort of fun will be banned under Europe. So, uh, let's try the drill. Quick! The Euro police are coming! Quick! Change! Change! Get change, closer! Get closer! Quick! 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 Change the hair! 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 and then spoiled it by uh, releasing an album that was actually duller than the
Yep. Yeah. But what do you know about running courses on management training and business strategies? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. All right. Well, by an amazing coincidence, neither do I. <laughs> However, that didn't stop us uh, devising and selling a management training course called On Target with Eric Bristol. <laughs> to a load of companies, right? The course claimed you could learn a lot about teamwork from the game of darts. And what we did was we put all the interested companies in a room and found out for ourselves just what you can do to six respectable businessmen without them walking out asking for the money back or throwing a dart at you. Here we are. On target with Eric Bristow. Well, I'm Eric Bristow and uh, darts is all about hitting the target. And uh, really, that, that's what today's all about. We all know what it's like at work. You're at work and the phone's continually ringing, uh, the photocopier's bust. All sorts of things can, can go on. And they make you lose sight of the target. There's a target. You lose sight of the target. <laughs> what Eric and Dave and I are here to do is perhaps try, try and uh, make you realise what your targets are. And with the darts, help to look at our targets uh, in business. Module one, engaging the competition. <laughs> Let's go on with module one. That's engaging the competition. So what we're going to do, we're going to play a little game, and I'm going to give you some targets here, put them on your back, give you three darts, and you're going to throw darts at each other. So you want to move on to a little bit of space. In many instances in this day and age, the target's on the front, not the back. It's very difficult to actually throw one mm -hmm. whilst worrying about my back. It seemed to paralyse yeah. me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in business, you have to watch your back. You are a target as well. That's a very important thing. Module two, take flight. I've got throw and aim and look. Okay. Now, in the world of darts, what order would those come in? Don't you do the first two in that order together? Don't think so. Uh, if you're looking, you're looking at the whole thing. Then you decide where you're going to aim. You, oh, if you, you mean look at the dartboard mm. first. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I, I suppose in that sense, yes. Could I have a volunteer to look and try for it? If you're throwing for anything. I want you to look and aim, but don't throw. OK, look and aim, but don't throw, Bernard. Dirty rat. <laughs> <laughs> because bringing everything back to what we were saying before, you are also a target for somebody else in business, and you are also, in a way, a dartboard. Module three, changing the rules of darts. Can you get me treble nineteen? Um, there it is. Yes, right. Bullo! <laughs> I put you off there. Oh yes. <laughs> In, in sport, that would be called cheating. But in business, sometimes changing the rules is the only way for us to, to succeed. Let's try something else. That's it up. <laughs> Obviously, you've got no chance whatsoever. What we need to do, we need to get the dart into this target. So how can we guarantee hitting the bullseye, but the dart has to stay here? How can we guarantee hitting the target? Anybody? Move the board. Move the board. Move the board. Exactly. <laughs> That's the solution. What I'd like is, is four volunteers yeah. in a line, because you're all going to, what are you going to do? Right. You're all going to throw the dart at the same time. We're going to, again, change the rules slightly. And because we're going to work in a team, we're going to use something different. And I think Eric's got something for us that we can use here. Here it is. <laughs> 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 If we can, uh, we could all sort of, two on one side and two on the other maybe, if that's the way to do it. Left foot first. Yes. Bullseye. <laughs> so in conclusion, here's our five point plan for success. Develop your skills. Be aware of the competition. Realise your goals. Take off. Succeed. Spells. Darts. <laughs> OK, shall we have another Snoop camera visit? Yes! yes. yes. Right, um, I don't know if anyone remembers Douglas Hogg, but he was the popular and far-sighted Tory agricultural minister who mainly, uh, everyone remembers, he used to go around in a very, very stupid hat. <laughs> um, nobody knew why he did this, but we found out. Now, we've got some footage of him on the cameras there. Now, there he is, walking down Downing Street. 
There he is. Now, look at that idiotic hat. He walks into number six of some house, then shuts the door. There's the security footage, takes the hat off. Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> He was a balloon man. <laughs> he lives in that hat now. Now, as the year ends, uh, there's no doubt our lives have been touched most movingly by the spin doctors, the political advisers who put the gloss on a politician's doo-doos. The spin doctors are the hype and the tripe, the gloss on the toss. <laughs> on election night, we got three of the best of them into our studio and played Spin Olympics. Let's uh, meet the three candidates <laughs> who are going to spin to win. Candidate you, number you one is Harvey well. Thomas, ex-consultant director of presentation for Margaret Thatcher, 1986 to 1991. <laughs> Candidate number two is Derek Draper, former chief advisor to Peter Mandelson. And finally, candidate number three is Tim Razzle, treasurer of the Liberal Democrats. <laughs> Oh. Okay, now we're on to round number one, which is called What My Colleague Meant To Say Was. It's a quick-fire gaff round where we flash a sequence of potential <laughs> gaffes committed by prominent politicians during the campaign, and you've got to save their skin with a bit of spin. So, for example, if we flash this up to you, Cherry Blair, I will leave the country if Labour get in. Okay. You might say, well, what Cherry meant to say was, if Labour get in, the standard of living will be so high that I'll be able to afford longer holidays abroad. <laughs> <laughs> David, please, give us your first gaffe. Paddy Ashdown, I would vote Lib Dems, but it's a wasted vote. But of course it won't be when proportional representation comes in, because then every vote will count. Oh! oh. Nice one! Good. Right, two. Really like really. Get two for that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then, let's go for this one. I'm going to tax the bollocks off every man... <laughs> Tony was speaking to the Women's Institute, and of course, there was no one with any bollocks in the room, and so he meant no tax rises for anybody. Michael Howard, I like posh spice best. She looks a bit dirty. I'm, I'm um, blowing, blowing me, me whistle here, but I can't see what you've written up there. You just think, Michael Howard, I'll defend him whatever he says. Yes. No, 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 not no, at all. I That's... like posh spice best. She looks a bit dirty. Well, actually, actually, <laughs> Michael Howard really? meant exactly what he said, because posh spice is actually a down wind uh, curry restaurant in Peterborough where he was with Brian McWhinney and, and that's the, the exact words yeah. he used. The she? Yeah. That's the waitress. Very good. Oh, Very good. Oh, yes. Brilliant but They're surreal. good at this job, aren't they? <laughs> right, okay, try this one then. <laughs> Michael Meacher, Harriet Harman, bad egg, nice ass. <laughs> Come on, come on. Oh, yeah, Joe. He meant to say bad, bad ass, now it's egg. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Michael Portillo, of course I'm pissed. <laughs> what, oh, actu actually, he was, speak he was speaking after the election, and what he actually said was, of course I missed. Ah. Yeah, ah. better, but still not worth the point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go, this is a good one. <laughs> David Blunkett, I hate Muslims. <laughs> Come what David Blunkett actually said was not that he hated Muslims per se, but he hated the stereotyping and labelling that people in the media, Ooh. unfortunately on tonight's occasion, your programme included, often use in a way that's quite denigrating oh. to the ethnic minorities. So please stop. I think you've got... <laughs> <laughs> Put us in our place. There's no democracy on this show. Derek is the winner. Move okay, on to right, Derek. Derek, we're going to take you through to the final round. Then this round is called. Uh, we have a very firm position on that. Basically, you'll be asked. <laughs> you'll be asked to change tack mid-sentence on a policy we give you, randomly generated by our policy tombola. Let's just show you how this policy tombola works. It's full of the sort of words that crop up in policies from all the parties. Slash, lock up. <laughs> increase, privatise. So what we'll do is we'll generate a policy on the policy tombola and then what you'll have to do is you'll have to speak on that policy until the klaxon goes and while you're speaking the spinning wheel of spin will be spun by spinning Jenny, Jenny Powell. Yeah. We'll start you off on talking that policy up. We'll then spin the wheel as you're talking and each time it rests on another mode like sound tough, in effect say nothing you'll have to switch to that mode, but without <laughs> pausing for breath, all right? So, first of all, let's come up with a policy. We, we would like to... We would like to... Nationalise. We would like to nationalise... Europe! <laughs> 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 
<laughs> all right. OK, talk it up, all right, starting from now. Right, well, it's a far-reaching policy, of course, because what it means is that each of the nations of Europe themselves will actually be improved under this new Sounds system. Tough. And if they don't like that, then they'll have to put up with it, because Tony, <laughs> Blair, <laughs> Tony Blair will be laying down the law on that Do and various other things. Uh, though, of course, by nationalise, we could also uh, imply <laughs> that each nation will still have control over its own affairs. Go negative. Europe will not be uh, at all, as the Conservatives have demonstrated in this election, have not got it. Clue in what effect, to say about that Europe. Europe. That's what he's been so, doing. Of course, <laughs> of course, with nationalisation or privatisation, you could equally imply that a new public-private partnership Talk is what's required down. with the best of old and the best of new. Although, of course, this has to be taken into account. <laughs> 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 Is all, all three of you are masters of spin. <laughs> but, uh, but, but congratulations, you have won our star prize, which is this beautiful set <laughs> of natural law yogic flyers. <laughs> uh, perhaps the scariest flesh in Europe after the touch of an old Spaniard. As, um, as Britain's beef. As Britain's beef is still banned on the flimsy pretext that it causes Germans to get Creutzfeldt Jakob's disease, <laughs> and a new evidence emerges that British farmers in the 80s forced cows to eat their own arses <laughs> three times a day until the cows' backs hit the ground, the Department of Agriculture has been forced to hit back. Now, they've formed themselves into a boy band called Topside, and uh, <laughs> their single Promoting British Beef got its first airing on our show. We're going to leave you with that. There's more from us this Friday in the party bucket. See you then, and goodbye. No, top side. Tell me you know. <laughs>